Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 26 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I will need you to pour yourself an enormous mug of iced coffee. I will need you to get out your Jetson Nano gear and I will need you to get ready to learn some cool new stuff. Hey, want to take a second? And thank you guys who are helping me out over on Patreon. You are keeping me in premium coffee beans and you're keeping my studio gear in top-notch condition. Those of you guys who are not helping out yet, look in the des description down below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump right into today's lesson. And what we're going to learn today is kind of what we're going to start learning about is, is getting a better feel for images in OpenCV. And specifically, we're going to be looking at understanding the color channels in an OpenCV image. And what we need to start getting really comfortable about is thinking about an image in mathematical terms. In mathematical terms, an image is a matrix. A matrix with rows and columns. Okay, so it's a two-dimensional matrix where you have rows and you have columns. And the intersection of a row and a column is a pixel. So let me see if I can draw a picture of this to kind of help you understand it a little better. We've talked about this before, but I just want you to continue to get more comfortable with the idea of an image not being some mystical thing out there, but that you can actually look at it in terms of math and understand what it is. And so an image is a matrix. So let's just kind of draw a matrix here. OK, I am trying to. Ah, that's not very good. Let me try that again. I'm still getting acclimated to getting good at drawing on this uh, on this uh, tablet. Okay, that's pretty good. So I'm drawing brackets indicating that I have a matrix. Okay, and I'm just going to put in empty spots. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four columns. Now this is the next row. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Okay, so how many rows do I have? I have five rows. And how many columns do I have? I have four columns. And so this would be a five by four matrix. And this is the thing that you got to kind of get acclimated to. Normally in a Cartesian coordinate, y is this way and x is this way. And you kind of have x comma y. So you go across x and y, so you think x comma y. But when you're dealing with matrices, you always go row col comma column. And so it's the rows first and then the columns. And the kind of strange thing that you notice here is the rows are more like y. And a lot of times people get really wrapped around the axle because they put like x comma y, like x pixel by y pixel. And then it turns out backwards when you're dealing with a matrix that the row, you start with the row and then the column. And so let's look over here and then let's see what would this element be. Okay, now the other thing that you got to realize is is that you start with zero. And so that would be row zero, this would be row zero, and this would be row one. So this would be element one, comma, and then this would be zero, one, two. So this would be the element one, two. So this is row one and column two, because this is row zero, this is row one, this is column zero, this is, this is column zero, column one, and column two. Okay, now the next thing that you have to understand is when you go to one of those positions, there is not one number in it. There are three numbers in it, and that is the value of blue, the value of green, and the value of red, OK? And so if we looked at, uh, let me come over here to, to this one, OK? You might have a number 
121, comma, 25, comma, 23. Okay, and that's for right here. So that would be row what? Well, this is 0, 1, 2, 3. So that would be row 3, and that would be comma 0, 1, 2. That would be 2. Okay, so you would index it with 3, comma 2. So if we called this matrix frame, then if I want this pixel, I would go to frame and then with square brackets 3 comma 2. And if I printed that, what would I get? Well, I would get the three numbers uh, 121 comma 25 and comma 23. Okay, does that make sense? Now what you can also do is you can even index the individual color. So if you said frame and then 3 comma 2 comma 0, what would that give you? That would give you the blue channel, the blue channel, and it would give you the number 121 because you go to row 3, column 2, and then the zeroth element, which is blue. And so again, this would be blue, green, red. So at any pixel, there's a little matrix with three numbers in it, which is blue and green and red. Now, if you have a grayscale, if you're dealing with a grayscale, you only have one number there. So let's go like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So this would be a three row by three column matrix, and I can see now that you can't quite see that. Let me turn the title off. Okay, you see you have a 3 by 3, and here you would have one number, which would be just a gray value, something between 0 and 255. And similarly for red, for green, and for blue, you know, red is between 0 and 255. Green is between 0 and 255, and blue is between 0 and 255. And I did this backwards. Again, I always think in terms of red, green, blue. But in OpenCV, it starts with blue, and then you get green, and then you get red. Okay, so at each pixel you get blue comma green comma red and each one of those numbers is a number between 0 and 255. For a grayscale, for a grayscale image, you only have one number there <coughs> and that number is between 0 and 255. 255 is white, 0 is black, and you have that gradient between those two. So hopefully that makes sense. We've got to get where we start thinking about a picture as a group of rows and group of columns and the intersection being a pixel and you'll find three numbers there. Okay, let's come back to OpenCV and let's see if we can jump in here. And I'm going to need to move some stuff around to get where I need to be. And so we are back on the Jetson Nano. And what I need you to do is go ahead and open up Visual Studio. All right. So I'm opening up Visual Studio. And I want to get that nice in a nice position where you can see. And then we are operating in the Pi Pro folder. <coughs> and then inside of Pi Pro, we have our OpenCV folder. So I want you to click on OpenCV and then come up to the plus icon by the little white page and click on that. And this is going to open a new Python program. And so what are we going to call this? This is OpenCV. And I think this is program 15 for us. And we're going to call this color channel.py. Okay. I'm going to turn the title back on here. All right, 
colorchannel.py enter. All right, we now have a fresh new program, so we need to go and get our starter program. Where do we go? We go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. When you get there, you can use this little icon to search on like a uh, web camera on Jetson Nano or something like that. Very quickly, you'll come to this code. Click on the little two page, the little double page icon that will select all the code. Right mouse click and copy. OK, now we come over to our program, right mouse click paste. And now we've got that starter program that will operate the camera, the Raspberry Pi camera or a webcam. I'm using a Raspberry Pi camera today, so I need to uncomment out this line that says cam set and uncomment out this line that says cam. And then I always like to come down here. We read a frame and show a frame, but I want to move my window. So I'm going to do a cv2.move window. And which window do I want to move? Nano cam. <clears throat> and where do I want to move it? I want to move it to 0, 0. <coughs> you guys believe me, you want to stay organized with your windows. If you are using a webcam, instead of uncommenting out these two lines, you would uncomment out this uh, cam is equal to cv2.video capture. And then you would either put a 0 or a 1 here. 0 would usually work. If it doesn't, you could put in a 1. Let's run this just to make sure that we haven't broken something. So run Python file in terminal. Ah, why did I not move the window? This is most peculiar. Did I misspell nanocam? CV2 as I am show CV2 dot move window. Let's try it again. That was a little strange. Man, what did I do wrong? OK, that looks good. Flip is 2. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to kill this. Quit. And I'm going to kill this Visual Studio. Open it again. Sometimes if you have unusual or unexpected problems, that is what you can do. We come back. I'm just going to look one more time. I do a cam read. I do a cv2.imshow nano cam frame. And then nano cam, I move the window to 0, 0. Now this is becoming serious. I'm wondering if that wants a tuple. Do you guys see my mistake? Did not want a tuple man. Namo cam. Oh man, were you guys screaming at me? Namo cam. Nano cam. Okay, I'm sorry for that. We'll get we'll get going here now. All right, now we've got our window fired up and where we want it. So we're going to queue out of that. Okay. So the first thing that I want you to do is to try to kind of like let's start getting comfortable with thinking of this image, which we read in a frame, let's start getting comfortable thinking of that as a matrix, OK? Let's start getting comfortable with thinking of that as a matrix. So let's just do some stuff to begin with. I'm going to print. And what I want to know is that frame, what shape is it? OK, what shape is it? So let's take a look at that. What shape would you think it is? Well, there's some number of rows and some number of columns. 
How many rows do you think there are? How many columns? And then also, there's something at that row column. So let's just see what it would say the shape is, all right? What would you think the shape would be? Okay, look at that. 480 rows, 640 columns, and then at each location is a little matrix with three elements, just like I drew. Okay, so I get 480 by 640 and 3. Now the reason that's kind of useful is, is that sometimes you get so into this thing, you end up with a little frame that you're working with and you don't know what size it is. Maybe you read it from a disk or you read it from your SD card and you need to know its shape. So you do the shape command. So you've learned something already today. Okay, but you also see that that shape is 640 by 480 because you set it there. So I could set this to 320 by 240. And then if I ran it, what's the shape going to be? Okay, 240. And understand, right, that the height is 240, and that's the number of rows. So that's 240 by 320, and again, a depth of each pixel of three numbers. Okay, so let me quit out of that. Let me make that again 640 by 480. Now let's convert this frame to grayscale. Remember we've done this before, but we can do that here. What we can say is, uh, let's see, we can come here and we can say gray is equal to cv2.cvt underscore cvt color, okay. And then what do I want to convert the color of? I want to convert the color of frame. And then I want to convert it with, uh, I want to convert it with cv2.color and then underscore. And I want to go bgr blue, green, red to gray, okay? And now what I want to look at is the shape not of frame, but of gray. What would you expect to be different here? What would you expect to be different here? Okay, you see what you have now is you have 480 rows and 640 columns and there's only one number there. And since the depth is only one, it doesn't show it. It's 640, it's 480 by 640 and there would just be a single number there. <coughs> okay, what else can we do? Kind of again, getting comfortable with thinking of this as a matrix. Well, I could say print, and what I would want is gray dot size. Okay, what would gray dot size be? Can you think? How big would this be? Well, the shape is 640 by 480, and so the size is 307,200. Huh. Let me get out my trusty calculator, and I can see that 480 times 640 is 307,200. So that's how many pixels you have there, all right? Now, I want you to tell me what you think I would get if I said I want frame dot size. Is that going to be the same, or is it going to be different? What do you think? Let's watch, okay? That's a lot bigger, right? Ooh, and I need to do this frame as well. So we're switching back to frame. And I'll quit out of this and then run it. Okay, so now I'm 480 times 640 times 3 and that's 921,600. So you see, this is telling you the total number of elements that you have. And for a color image, it's the number of rows times the number of columns times the number of channels. There's three channels, a blue channel, a green channel, and a red channel. All right, does that make sense? Okay, now what I want to show you is, is that you can actually, you can actually split that overall image, like watch this, okay? You see how this is the overall frame that we have? 
Okay, there I am in full living color, something that you would be completely comfortable with, like a normal image, okay? But what you know is, is that image is made up of three channels, a blue channel, a green channel, and a red channel. Can we split that into those three channels? Let's see, okay? The way I could do it is I could say that B is equal to CV2 dot split. So I'm going to split it. Okay. What am I going to split? I'm going to split frame. I'm going to split frame. Okay. And the blue channel is the first number, right? We get down to that little group of three. It's the first number, which is the zeroth number. And so I'm going to make this zero. Okay. And then I can get green is equal to CV2 dot split. What I'm going to split frame, and then this would be the one element, which is the second one. All right, and then red is equal. Red is uh, red. Red is equal to CV2 dot split, and then this is going to be frame, and this is going to be two which is the third element. I hope that makes sense. It's just you're starting, you have three numbers and it starts with zero, so it's zero, one, two, like that. Okay, now I have split my picture into three pictures. So what should I do? Well, I should probably show them. So I'm gonna do CV2 dot, uh, I'm gonna do CV2 dot I am show. Give me just a second here. Okay, I'm going to do cv2.im show, and this time, what do I want to show? Well, I want to show blue, the blue channel, okay? And then that is going to be, what do I show? Blue, All right? Now, I want to stay organized, so I'm going to do a cv2.move window, and then what do I want to move? I'm going to want to move the blue window, and then where do I want to move it to? Well, I'm going to move it over 500 and down zero, okay? Now, the easiest thing will be for me to just copy and paste this, okay? So I'm going to copy and paste this. And this time, I want to show green, the green channel, and that is going to be G. <clears throat> paste again, paste again, and this time the third number is going to be red, and I am going to want to, I really messed up here somewhere, so I show blue and I move window blue. I show green. How did I mess up so badly? Let me get rid of all this. Let's try this again. Okay. So I am going to get my blue, which should work. Copy. I'm going to come here and paste it. And then I'm going to I am show green. And that will be G. And then I want to move window green. And then where do I want to move it? Well, I want to move it, mm, let's move it this time. This was over 500. Let's go this time over zero and down 500. Do you think this is going to work? Or we might be overlapping these a little bit. So when I went over here, I should probably, let's say, go over 700 and then down 100, and then now I'm going to do red. So I will copy these, and I will come down in Control V, and this is my red channel. So I will make this red, and the matrix R, and then move red. And this time I want to go over 700. I want to go over 700 and down 500. Okay, so now this should give me the composite image and then it should give me the, the blue channel, the green channel, and the red channel. Okay, so let's see if that works. 
something it did not like in line 20. Oh man, look at that. That should be what two? Did you get, get guys catch that? It's the zero th one two, zero one two. All right, I'm sorry. Hope that didn't confuse you, but let's run this thing now. All right, boom. What happened to my original window? Where did that go? Did I not I am show my original one? Or is it hiding somewhere? What happened to my original window? Oh, I must have erased it when I was fixing that mess up. So I need to do a CV2, CV2, CV2.im show. And I want to show nano cam. And I want it to be uh, frame. OK. I think that should work. OK, boom, look at that. All right, so you can see that I have a blue channel, I have a green channel, and I have a red channel. Now, one of the things that this is going to show you is this is going to show you kind of what the problem that we have in trying to sort or trying to track things based on a color that's in the RGB uh, color space. If you look at me in the composite image, in the NanoCam image, it looks like, oh, I've got a red shirt and a green background, and there's just this real distinction between the colors, OK? But if you look at my shirt, yeah, red is pretty bright, OK? Red is pretty bright. That's the lightest. That's the brightest. But if you look at blue, it's like it's seeing blue in this shirt and maybe less green. And similarly, the background is the brightest in green, but it seems to be seeing a lot of blue. And so while we look through our eyes, there's this incredible amount of image processing where everything looks so different and we just see such high contrast and it's so clear what is blue and it's so clear what is green and it's so clear what is red. But the way the computer sees it, if you look at these three images, it would be really hard to pick out my red shirt, right? Because it sees some red in it, it sees some green in it, and it sees some blue in it. And let me see if I've got like some color pins here that I could kind of show you. That you see this is a green pin. You guys can see this is a green pin. Well, if I show it, you see that, okay, it doesn't see any blue and any red at all. In the green pin, the red is black, meaning nothing is really there. OK, but it sees some blue and it sees some green in it. If I get the red pin, man, it sees red the brightest, that's for sure. But then blue and green are kind of about the same. <coughs> and then the blue pin, again, blue is the brightest, but it does see some green in the blue. Is that confusing? Yes. And if we tried to track things based on color when we're in the red, green, blue space, it's going to be really, really confusing. OK, it's going to be really, really confusing. So what we're going to see is we're going to see that in order to really deal with colors, we have to have something that the computer sees better. And what the computer can see better is for us not to operate in red, green, blue. Because everything out there has red and has green and has blue, we need something that is more distinct. And what that means is we need to go to the hue, saturation, and value color space. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next lesson, in the next tutorial. We're going to see how HSV works. And it's really very intuitive. And we can understand it as people. And the computer can understand things much better and it much more distinctly understands the difference between colors based on the HSV parameters than on the RGB parameters. But we still got a lot of learning left to do today. So let me quit out of this. And let's look at some other things that we could do. Well, one thing that we could do is 
one thing that we could do is is that we could address these things differently okay we could address these things differently and rather than saying b is equal to this g is equal to this and r is equal to this i'm going to comment these out we could actually do this because these are matrices okay now i want you to think like if i say cv2 dot split and if i split frame how many numbers is it going to return? Three. So what I could do is in one line of code here, I could just say b comma g comma r is equal to cv2 dot split frame because cv2 dot split frame returns three numbers. The first number I am stuffing into b, the second number I am stuffing into g, and the third number I am stuffing into red. So let's run this and see if that works. OK, there it is, you see? Simpler way to do it. Again, we're starting to think of pictures as mathematical matrices. All right. What else could we do? Hmm, let me see something else. OK, let me just print. I'm going to take these two print statements out. OK. What if I came here? And what if I printed, I'm going to print frame, and then I'm going to print 50, comma, 45, comma, 1. Now if I do that, I should say print, not printed. If I do that, tell me in words what it's going to print. What it's, what's it going to print? Is it going to print a number, or is it going to print a matrix? OK, it's going to print a number. And what's that number going to represent? It's going to represent in the image the 50th row, OK, and the 45th column. So 50 down, 45 across the 50th row and the 40th column, that pixel. That pixel has three numbers, blue, green, red, but it's not going to print all three. It's going to print what? The one position, which is blue is 0, green is 1. So it's going to print the green value of the pixel on the 50th row in the 45th column. So let's watch that. And let me bring this back. Okay. I still have a print in here somewhere. What am I printing? I'm still printing size for some reason. Oh. Do you guys see my print statement? This is. I'm still printing the. size for some reason. This is perplexing. Let me quit that. Let me take this print out that I just put in and see I should have no prints in here or I am going crazy. OK, nothing is printing, right? Nothing is printing. So now I will quit. OK, now I will put that one print statement back in where I'm looking at the 50th row, the 45th column, and the blue color. OK, so I'm printing a single number there. That makes sense, right? So it's looking at whatever it's looking at, and it's seeing a blue value of 126. Well, let me move this over here, OK? And now let me put a blue pin here and get it up in that corner and see if I can get Oh, wait a minute, blue, green. Ah, that is green that it's looking at, right? So that's not good because there's too much green in this already. So let me quit this. 
And instead of looking at green, let me look at blue, which would be 0. So this is looking at row 50, row 50, column 45, and then it is looking at the 0th position, which would be the blue channel. So now let's run this. OK, here we are. And so you see, just sitting there, it is seeing a little blue out there. On a scale of 0 to 255, it is seeing a blue value of between 70 and 80. But if I give it a blue pin and try to get it over that position, you see all of a sudden now it's seeing a very large blue because the pin is at that pixel or the, you know the that pixel is within the outline of that pin okay so you see we're starting to deal with pictures and colors as mathematical elements that we can manipulate okay as mathematical elements that we can manipulate and work with it is a matrix all right <coughs> you know we can actually create we can actually create images as well. And so let me come up here before this while loop and let me show you how to do this. I think we might have done that before, but I'm just going to say a blank image. And I do that with the NP function. So if I'm going to use NP NumPy, I better import it. So I'm going to import in NumPy, my NumPy library as NP. And then I'm going to create, I'm going to use NP to just create a blank image. So I'm going to say blank is equal to np dot zeros, which just means I want zeros in here. Okay. And then how big do I want this to be? Well, I want it to be 480 rows by 640 columns. And I'm going to make it grayscale, which means that I just want it one deep. So this is going to be a grayscale image. And then I need to put comma. And then what do I need to put here? I need to tell it the format of the number. It's going to be numpy.unsigned int 8-bit. So what type of number is going to be those pixels? It's going to be an unsigned int, uint8 for 8-bit. OK, now what I could do is I could come down here and I could show cv2.im show, OK? And then I can make it nano. No, I could make it that was blank. And then I'm going to show the blank image that I just created. OK, now I am going to do a new win a, a move window. OK, and the window that I want to move is going to be blank. <coughs> And now I am going to go over, I think, about 1,400 and down 0. And so now I should show that. Since I put in all zeros in it, what should it be? It should be a black window. Boom. You see that? That is a picture with all black, with all black pixels. OK, so let's quit out of that. What else could I do, though? OK, I created that. I hate doing this stuff on the fly. But what if I said blank? And what part of blank will I want? Colon, which just means all rows and all columns. And let's say that that is going to be equal to 125. So instead of being 0, I'm going to make it 125. What should happen this time if I am thinking correctly? It should make that image gray. Uh-huh. You see that? It's gray now. OK, it is gray. <clears throat> what if I made it 255? It's going to be what? White. OK, so what you're kind of learning here is I have this array that's called blank. And when I put the brackets, that's showing the range. And when I don't put anything there, that just means all rows, all columns. Let's say if I could go from 0 to, let's say I want to go 0 to, this is 480, so 240, if I'm thinking right. And then I want to go from 0 
from column zero to column, uh, how big was this crazy thing? 640, so I would say 320. <coughs> and I make that 125. What's that going to do? It's going to put a gray box in the middle of my black image, or in the corner of my black image, if I am thinking correctly. Yeah, OK. You see I made a gray box there. So all of a sudden, our images, we're seeing them as nothing other than just mathematical functions. It does kind of bother me a little bit that that is scooted over too far. So I made that 1,400. Let's see if I made it 1,350, if that would look better. OK, yeah, that looks better. OK, the other thing I could do, again, we're just learning how to work with, with these images as mathematical matrices. So what would be the other interesting thing that I could do? Well, what if I made red? OK, so I've created blue, green, and red, OK, as I've created blue, green, and red as uh, grayscale images. What if I wanted to mix the color back into them? OK. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new array, which is going to be blue. OK. And I'm going to go back and make blank, just blank. OK, so it's just black. So blank is just equal to that original thing I did. I'm going to stop fooling with it. It's just going to be black. OK, now I'm going to try to make the red window instead of grayscale, I'm going to make it red. And the blue window, rather than being grayscale, I'm going to make it blue. And the green window, rather than being grayscale, I'm going to make it green. And so what I could do there is I could create a new window, which I'm going to call blue. And the blue window is going to be, instead of a split, it's going to be a merge. So I'm going to cv2 dot merge. And so I'm going to put something back together. And what am I going to put together? Well, if I'm on the blue channel, if I'm on the blue channel, what do I want the first value to be? B, OK. What do I want the second one? That's the green position. I don't want anything. That's going to be the blank. And then the red is going to be blank. OK, so to create a blue channel blue, I'm putting the blue grayscale into the blue position of a color image. OK, and now let's copy this and let's paste it. And now this one will be green. So I want my green channel now to be in color. So this would be, blue would be blank. And then what do I put here? I put my green array and then blank. And then this would be, what, red. And then that I'm going to merge blank, blankety, blank, red, OK? <coughs> now, down here in my shows, instead of showing blue, green, red, what I want to show, instead of BGR, I want to show the blue that I just created, the green I just created, and the red, the red I just created, OK? It did not like something. It says red is not defined. Oh, this should be R. Did you guys catch that? I don't know what red is yet. It should be R. All right, now let's run this thing and see what happens. All right, look at that. OK, so now what you can see is, is my green channel is green. My red channel is red, and my blue channel is blue. So if you kind of look at the overall system here, 
most of this picture that you see is it's mostly what it's mostly green and it's mostly red like you look at my red shirt there's a lot of red there you look at the background there's a lot of green there your face actually has a lot of red in it and you can see that there's not a lot of blue well if I put this blue pin in all of a sudden the blue kind of shows up bright so you do see some blue there so what you can see now is is that we're looking at the red the green and the blue channel in red green and blue and again what you see is is that there's a lot of red and there's a lot of green and there's some blue and so if we were trying to track things on this it turns out to be kind of complicated and there is just not a whole lot of blue in this whole thing is there not a whole lot of blue okay so let me see if I can get these things up and blank is still blank now now blank is is really all blank okay now I'm going to quit what if I created a new matrix that, remember how we had our B, our G, and our R? Our B, our G, and our R values, that is a 640 by 480 by 1, because there's only one number at those intersections. What could I do? I could merge that back together. And I could say merge is equal to CV2.merge. I'm going to put back together what? B comma G comma R <coughs> and then what am I going to do I'm going to I'm show I'm not going to show blank anymore because that's not very interesting where I come down where did I show blank here I'm going to call this merge and then what am I going to show I'm going to show merge and then what do I want to move the window merge okay so now let's do a run Python file in terminal. Uh, what is it not like? Uh, did not like it wants at most two. Merge takes at most two. What did I do wrong with merge? Oh, I think it wants a tuple there, so that needs an extra set of parentheses, I do believe. Let's see if that works. So I'm sending it a tuple BGR. All right, let's see if that works. Run Python file in terminal. Okay, boom. All right, look at this. You see here I am starting where I have the composite image. I break the composite image into blue, green, and red. And then I put the blue, green, and red back together into a merged image, and I get the original thing back. So you see what I am here is kind of the summation of these three channels, the blue channel, the green channel, and the red channel. Now, I cannot just help myself playing around with this. What if I made this, what if I made this G, and I made this R, and I made this B. I am jumbling the colors. Now the merged image is going to be in color, but it's going to be crazy, right? Because I'm kind of swapping the colors out. Okay. Do you see that? <coughs> My red shirt has turned green. The blue background, has, or the green background, has kind of turned blue, and my face, which is red, has kind of turned green. And so we've really jumbled the colors up pretty good there. Okay, so you see, there's some pretty neat things you can do. Let me let me run that again. Okay, so I'm going to get the red pin. This is the red pin, and it looks what green. The green pin looks purple, which we'll kind of call blue. The, the green pin goes to purple. And then the blue pin goes to red. So you see we've, we've jumbled the colors up. And why do I do that? Just to show you the power that you have using OpenCV that we are now working with. We are working with, uh, we are working with these array, or we're working with these images as mathematical elements that we can go in and we can manipulate at the pixel level or the color of a pixel we can manipulate it okay let me just try one more thing all right so let me run this thing again 
run Python file in terminal. Okay. That looks pretty good. I probably really shouldn't try to do this. I really shouldn't do this. But I'm going to go back to B, G, R. And I really shouldn't do this, but I'm just going to try it. I'm going to say B is equal to B times 1.2. I don't know if I can do scalar multiplication like that. I really don't know if I can do scalar multiplication on a matrix, but I'm just going to try it. Oh, that should be G, All right? BGR. So what am I doing? I'm I take it apart and now I'm boosting the blue channel. What is that not like? It does not like that multiplication that I'm doing. How would I do that? Maybe I would say B Maybe I've got to try to index it some way. Let's see. I know how to do it in NumPy, but B I don't think is a NumPy array. All right. Boom. Look at that. Okay, you see, I introduced some kind of crazy things in there because I really boosted blue. I really boosted, boosted blue. And so I've kind of taken things and I've made them more blue okay let me quit that so instead of saying that let's let's take let's take red and make red red times 0.5 so I want to really tone down the red in my images okay do you see that how I'm looking a lot more blue because I took the red out. My face is looking blue. My shirt is not as my shirt is not as red. Okay. This is kind of fun. What if we said let's really turn let's turn green way down. Green is equal to green times 0.1. And I do that because that green screen now should just really be kind of faded out back there. 0.1. All right, run Python file in terminal. Oh yeah, look at that. You see, I turned the green way down and now the background looks blue because I was telling you that when it was looking at that green screen, it's seeing green and it's seeing blue. I've taken the green out and what is left is blue. Okay, my face would probably be almost the right because there wasn't a lot of green in my face, but what little there was was taken out, so I'm looking like a lot more pink, okay, and a lot more red. All right, so let's see what happens here also. So the blue pin looks very blue. The green pin has kind of gone away, or if anything has a little blue, and the red pin still looks red. All right, this has been kind of neat. I hope you guys have had fun with this. All right, let me give you a, a homework assignment for next week. Let me sum this up. All right, let me, let me see if I can sum this up. A picture is nothing but a matrix, a matrix with rows and columns. If you have a grayscale at the intersection of a row and a column, you have one number, a number between 0 and 255. If you have a color image, the intersection of a row and a column, you'll find three numbers, a blue value, comma green, comma red, B, comma G, comma R. All right. And you can address those using your brackets and indexes down to the individual color of an individual pixel. Okay. <coughs> so what you can see is a picture is nothing but a matrix. All right, what you can also see is, is that the problem, I will take this out, is the problem if we start trying to use this in artificial intelligence, colors are really, really clear to me. It's like, oh, that's blue, oh, that's green, oh, that's red, it's so clear, okay? But to the computer and to the camera, you see, 
when I have green up here in the background, it sees green and it sees blue. And when I put the blue pin up there, okay, it is seeing some green and it is seeing some red in that. And in the green pin, it is seeing the other colors. So if I tried to go to this and say, find the red pin in the picture, it's going to have a whole lot of trouble doing that. It's going to have a whole lot of trouble finding that. <coughs> so what we need to do is we need to convert our pictures away from, we need to convert our pictures away from red, green, blue, and we need to go to the color space of hue, saturation, and value. And so what your homework assignment is for next week is to get comfortable with this idea of specifying colors not as RGB, but specify them as hue, saturation, value, HSV. And by HSV, you can really track things on color. It's completely clear to you, and it's completely clear to the computer what color you're dealing with. So I need you to kind of go in and find some of these color wheels, like you can search on uh, HSV color wheel or HSV color space and to get comfortable with it. And then next week, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to convert our RGB image to HSV. When you look at it on the screen, it's going to look exactly the same, but you're representing it with different numbers. And then boom, we're going to be able to start finding things and tracking things based on color. That is what we are going to do next week. Let's see, do I have a secret word for you to show me that you made it to the end of the video, HSV? That is the secret word. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, let me know by typing in HSV. Okay, guys, again, really want to thank you guys that are helping me out on Patreon. And I want you guys to go out, work on your homework, and then I will talk to you guys later. Also, remember, hook a brother up with a thumbs up. Okay, give me a thumbs up. It really helps me. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.